Hello everyone, you're welcome to solve this nice algebra equation, which is x minus 2 to the power of 2. This is equal to square root of x plus 2. So what are the values of x, given that x is a member of real numbers? So let's provide a solution from here. Now the first step, we can let this square root of x, we can let the square root of x be equal to u. So this means that x is the same thing as u squared. Substituting u back to the equation, then we have u squared minus 2 to the power of 2. This is equal to u plus 2. So we have that u squared minus 2 to the power of 2. This is in the form of a minus b raised to the power of 2. This can be expressed as a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Applying this algebraic identity, then here we have u to the power of 2, raised to the power of 2, then plus 2 squared, which is 4, then minus 2 times u squared times 2. This is equal to u plus 2. So that now, here we have u to the power of 4, then plus 4 minus, now, here we have 2 times 2, which is 4, u to the power of 2. Let's take u plus 2 on the left hand side. So this means we minus u, subtract 2, this is equal to 0. Now, here we have u to the power of 4, then plus 4, we have 4 minus 4u squared minus u minus 2. This is equal to 0. So you can say 4 minus 2. And this is the same thing as u to the power of 4 minus 4u squared. Then we have minus u. We have minus u here. Then plus 2. This is equal to 0. Now, we have that u to the power of 4, this can be expressed as u to the power of 2, then raised to the power of 2, subtract. Now, we can express 4u to the power of 2 as 2 to the power of 2, multiplying by u to the power of 2, then subtract. Now, u plus 2 can be expressed as, remember 1 is common here, so we can factor out 1, so that we have u minus 2, this is equal to 0. So here we have u to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 2 to the power of 2 multiplying by u to the power of 2. This can be expressed as 2u raised to the power of 2. Then subtract u minus 2. Cross the parentheses. This is equal to 0. Now, u to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 2u to the power of 2. This is in the form of a squared minus b squared, which we can express as a plus b, a minus b. So this implies that here we have u squared plus 2u. Then we have u squared minus 2u. Then subtract 1, multiplying by u minus 2, this is equal to 0. Now, from here, we have u squared plus 2u. Now, if you check u squared minus 2u, this means that u is common here, so we can factor out u, so that into the parentheses, here we have u minus 2, then subtract 1, into the parentheses, u minus 2, this is equal to 0. So we have that u minus 2 and u minus 2 is common here. So we can factor out u minus 2. So that now, into the parentheses, here we have u multiplying by u squared plus 2u. Then we have, here we have minus 1. This is minus 1 the parentheses this is equal to 
0. So we have two parts here. We have u minus 2. Then here we have u times u squared. This is u to the power of 3. Then plus u times 2u. This is 2u squared. Then subtract 1. This is equal to 0. Now, we have two parts as you see. This is u minus 2. This is equal to 0. And the second part here is u to the power of 3 plus 2u squared minus 1. This is equal to 0. The second part is a cubic uh, function here or a, or a polynomial of degree 3. Then for the first part here, we have that u1 is equal to 2. We have that u1 is equal to 2. Now, to solve this cubic function here, we can use the rational root theorem so that let's 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 use u equal to minus one so let's check u equal to minus one substituting minus one here then we have minus one to the power of three then plus two minus one squared subtract one this is equal to zero so this means that minus one to the power of three this is minus one then plus this is minus one squared which is one times two this is two then subtract one this is supposed to give us a value of 0, so minus 1 plus 2, this is equal to 1 minus 1, this is equal to 0. So minus 1 minus 1 is 1 minus 1, this is 0, which is equal to 0. So this means that u equal to minus 1, this is the second value of u. So we have that u2 is equal to minus 1. u1 is equal to 2 and u2 is equal to minus 1. So now, since we have u2 equal to minus 1, then we can use the synthetic division. Let's use the synthetic division to solve for other values of u. So from here, since we have u equal to minus 1, and the cubic function, remember we have the cubic function here, which is u to the power of 3 plus 2 u squared then plus we have zero u we don't have u we don't have u here we have only u squared so we have zero u then minus one this is equal to zero so this is our cubic function so the coefficient for this cubic function here we have one then we have two the coefficient of u is equal to zero then we have minus one so here, let's drop this one here, so that minus 1 times 1, this is minus 1. So let's add 2 plus minus 1, this is the same thing as 1. Then minus 1 times 1, this is equal to minus 1. Then 0 plus minus 1, this is minus 1. Then minus 1 times minus 1, this is 1. So let's add again here, minus 1 plus 1, this is equal to 0. And these are the coefficient. These are the coefficient of the quadratic equation of the quadratic equation. So now given this coefficient here, this means we have u squared plus u subtract one. This is equal to zero. This is our quadratic equation. So this means that we can solve for u3, comma u4 by applying the quadratic formula. That's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Everything here divided by 2 times a. So let's substitute the values of, of a, b, and c from this quadratic equation. From this quadratic equation, we have a equal to 1, b equal to 1, and c equal to minus 1. So let's substitute in this quadratic formula so that we have minus 1 plus or minus. We have the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, then times c, which is minus 1. Everything here divided by 2 times 1. So this means that here we have minus 1 plus or minus. We have the square root of 1 squared. This is 1. 
minus 4 times minus 1, this is plus 4 divided by 2. And this implies that here we have minus 1 plus or minus, we have the square root of 5 divided by 2. So this implies that we have u3 is equal to minus 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. And we have that u4, this is equal to minus 1 minus square root of 5 divided by 2. So this means that from here, from here, we have that we end that e1 is equal to, to 2, u2 is equal to minus 1, and u3 is minus 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Then we have u4, which is minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So we have that u2, this is less than, this is less than 0. And we have that minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. This is also less than 0. And this will not give us a real solution. This will not give us... So there's no real solution that will satisfy the equation. There will be no real solution that will give us the value of x that will satisfy this equation here. So this means that u4 and u2, this are rejected so we reject u2 and u4 so let's focus on u1 and u3 now since we have u1 which is equal to 2 remember this is greater than 0 and u3 which is minus 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 which is also greater than 0 then we can proceed to solve for the value of x now if you recall we have seen that let square root of x b equal to u so let's substitute u let's start with u1 which is 2 so this means that square root of x is equal to 2 so to solve for x here we square both sides so that now x1 is equal to 2 squared which is equal to 4 so this is the first solution for x now we have that square root of x this is equal to u3, which is minus 1, plus square root of 5, divided by 2. Now, here we can write this as square root of x. This is equal to square root of 5, minus 1, over 2. So, to solve for x here, again, we square both sides. So that now, we eliminate the square root sign, so that x2 is equal to now this is the same thing as square root of 5 minus 1 squared divided by 2 squared which is equal to 4 so this implies that in the numerator part here we can expand this equation here so we have square root of 5 minus 1 squared which is square root of 5 raised to the power of 2 then plus 1 squared then subtract 2 times square root of 5 times 1, everything here, divided by 4. So this implies that here, square root of 5 to the power of 2, this means we eliminate the square root sign, so that we have 5 plus 1 minus 2 square root of 5, divided by 4. So 5 plus 1, this is equal to 6, minus 2 square root of 5, divided by 4 and this implies that since 2 is common here we can factor out 2 into the parentheses this is 3 minus square root of 5 divided by 4 so let's simplify here 4 divided by 2 this is 2 and remember here this is 3 minus square root of 5 divided by 2 and this implies that here, this is the same thing as 3 minus square root of 5, which is actually equal to 2.2361 divided by 2. And this will give us a value of x equal to 0 0.38195. So this is the value of x. 
this is the value of x. So the next step from here is to verify that this is actually x2, is to verify that these values of x satisfies the equation. Now let's verify that x1 which is equal to 4 and x2 which is 0 0.381195 satisfies the equation. So if you recall, we end that x minus 2 to the power of 2. This is supposed to give us a value of square root of x plus 2. So let's, let's substitute to x which is 4. So we have 4 minus 2 to the power of 2. This should give us a value of square root of 4 plus 2. So 4 minus 2, this is 2 squared. This is supposed to give us a value of square root of 4, this is 2, then plus 2. So 2 squared, this is 4, which is equal to 2 plus 2, which is 4. So this implies that the left add side is equal to the right add side. And this proves that x1, which is equal to 4, satisfies the equation. So let's check x2. Substituting x2 into the equation, we'll have 0 0.38195 minus 2. Everything here raised to the power of 2. This is equal to square root of, this is square root of 0 0.38195, then plus 2. So from here, we have 0 0.38195, subtract 2, this is the same thing as minus 1.61805, raised to the power of 2, this is equal to square root of 0 0.38195, which is the same thing as 0 0.6181 plus 2. So minus 1.61805 squared, this is 2. 0.6181 and this is equal to 2 plus 0 0.6181 this is the same thing as 2.6181 so this implies that the left add side is equal to the right add side and this again proves that x2 also satisfies the equation so both x1 and x2 satisfies the equation so can you follow the steps like this video and country subscribe. Please like this video and country subscribe. See you in the next video.